Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to set up dynamic lighting in Roll20. Specifically, we'll cover walls, doors, windows, light sources, and token vision settings so that your players can see everything as their characters would. Now, one thing to note is that in order to use dynamic lighting, you do need to have a Plus or Pro Roll20 account. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Okay, so here I am in my game, I've loaded in this map of this manor house, I've got my Warlock Jolo on the battlefield. Now, to help illustrate what dynamic lighting looks like to our players, at several points during the video I'm going to pull up my player's view. So this is what my player sees when they're logged in on their side. And just so you all know, this player view is a function of my screen recording software, it's not part of Roll20 itself. We will talk about how you can look through a particular character's token's eyes later, but for right now just know that this is what my player sees. Okay, so to start things off, what I'm going to do is turn on dynamic lighting for this particular page. And to do that, we go up to the page toolbar, we're going to go to the map where we want to turn on dynamic lighting, and we're going to click the little settings cog in the top right corner of the map's tile, and we're going to go to dynamic lighting, and we're going to turn dynamic lighting on. Now, for illustrative purposes, just to keep things easy for right now, I'm also going to turn on daylight mode, which puts light across all of the map. So we'll modify this a little bit later, but for right now, I want light everywhere. And then we will save settings, and we will close the page toolbar. And you'll notice my view as the GM got a little bit dimmer, but if we look at our player's view, it is now pitch black. And that's because Jolo's token doesn't have vision enabled, so he can't actually see. So let's fix that. What I'm going to do is double click on Jolo's token, and we'll move this a little bit over, and we're going to turn Jolo's vision on, and then we'll save settings. And now because Jolo's token has vision turned on, our player can see the map. So this is great, but now Jolo can see the entire map. He can see through the walls of the room he's in and into the rooms beyond. So that's the next thing we want to take care of is setting up the walls on the map. So to handle that, what we're going to do is go to the lighting layer. Just going to click on this right here. And I'm going to go up to the pen tool right here. And I'm going to choose pen line from the menu. And this will allow us to draw walls on the map. My personal recommendation is to make your walls blue because most of the modules that you'll find in Roll20 will have blue walls and this just kind of keeps things consistent. I'm going to keep the regular settings for right now. And what we need to do is we're going to find a wall on our map. I'm just going to click right here. And I don't need to drag or anything. I can just move my mouse cursor down to the next point, click again, and Roll20 will complete the line between the two points I just created. And that continues on. I'm going to move over to this point right here, click again, draws another wall. I'm going to move up and click another wall. And then when I'm done, I'm going to right click to complete this segment. And now when I did that, you'll notice in my player's view that Jolo can't see a big chunk of the map anymore because there is a solid wall between him and the rest of the map. So I'm going to move my cursor again. I'm going to create another point right here on the other side of this door. We'll click to here. We'll move up. And I'm just following the wall around. And now if you make a mistake, like if you accidentally keep going and I click down here, you can press Control Z on your keyboard and that will remove the last point that you placed. And then again, once you're done, right click. That makes the wall solid, and you can see now that Jolo's vision is limited just to the room that he's in and the spots in the doorway that I haven't blocked off yet. We're going to put doors there in a few minutes. Now, I mentioned earlier it was possible for you to look through a token's eyes as the GM, so this is a good time to show you how to do that. I'm going to go back to the token layer here, and I'm going to click on Jolo's token, and I'm going to press Control L on my keyboard. And this allows me to effectively look through Jolo's eyes and see things as Jolo sees them. And you can see down here, it tells you we are previewing as Jolo, and we can exit the preview at any time by clicking this link right here, or just by clicking off of Jolo's token. All right, so now at this point, what I'm going to do is go back to the dynamic lighting layer, and I'm going to draw the rest of the walls onto this map. 
Okay, so I've fast forwarded time a bit. I've drawn in all the rest of the walls onto my map. And now let's talk about how we place doors on the map. To place a door, we're gonna click on this toolbar button here. This is the lighting toolbar button. And when we click on it, we can select place door. Now, you're gonna get a pop-up that says to use doors, you must enable restrict movement. Would you like us to turn that on for you? Say yes to this, because that setting is what's going to prevent your players from walking through walls and doors on the map. Next thing we're gonna do is go to door line color, and I'm gonna make this orange. And again, I'm doing that because this is the traditional door color in a lot of Roll20 modules that you'll find on the marketplace. And so for consistency, I'm just gonna go with that. I'll say okay. And now my cursor is changed into this door icon. I can just move it wherever I'd like to place a door, click, and it adds a door. And I'll place another one right here. Now, once you've got the doors placed, you can switch back to the arrow tool and we can manipulate the line that controls how big the door is. We can just drag to make the door a little bit wider or to adjust its position. So I'm gonna just make these a little bit wider right here and drag it down just a tiny bit. Once you've placed your doors in a room, I recommend switching back to the token layer and then using the control L shortcut to look through your character's eyes again and just make sure there are no gaps between the wall and the door because sometimes if they aren't lined up properly, your characters will be able to see through tiny gaps in here. Let me just illustrate that real quick. I'll jump back to the dynamic lighting layer and I'll make it so these don't quite line up. And now if I look through the character's eyes again, you can see there's this tiny little gap right here in the dynamic lighting wall that they can see through. And maybe you want that, you know, maybe you want there to be a crack in the door or something like that, but chances are you don't. So we'll go back to the dynamic lighting layer and again, just readjust that line and then we can peek and we're good to go. Now you may have noticed that when I clicked on a door, I got this little context menu here. So I'm gonna bring up my player's view again. If we make the door opened, then the door is open and the character can see through it and they can move through it. If it's not opened, then it's closed. We can also make it locked. Now when the door is locked, we as the DM get a little lock icon over it, but you'll notice in the player view that lock icon is not displayed. It doesn't change until the player tries to interact with the door. So if your player tries to click on the door and it's locked, you'll notice I just did it and the icon kind of jiggled a little bit and then it has the lock on it now. So the character knows that this door is locked. So then they can make a check to try and pick the lock or force the door open or whatever it is. And then you as the DM can change the door from locked to opened and then they can continue on. Now there's also this secret door option. And so I'm gonna move my character to a different part of the map here so that I can set that up. And if I jump back to the dynamic lighting layer here, you'll notice that I have a gap in the wall right here. This is gonna be where I'm going to place a secret door. So again, I'm gonna grab my door here. I'm actually gonna change the color of this one to be red. And that's just to give myself a visual indicator when I'm on the dynamic lighting layer that this door is different. So I know that the orange doors are gonna be regular doors and the ones that are red are secret doors. And this is just my own personal thing. You can do this if you want. You can keep them the same colors as the regular doors if you want. There's you know no mechanical benefit to it just from an ease of use perspective. Now I'm gonna click on the door and I'm gonna switch it from opened to closed and I'm gonna mark it as secret. Now let's jump back to our token layer and let's look through our character's eyes again. And when we do that, you'll notice that our character can't see through the door, but the character, it looks like they can still see the door icon. This is one of the challenges with using the control L shortcut because it lets you see things from the player's perspective but it still gives you, the DM, the ability to see things that are only visible to the DM. So this is why I like to show things from the player's perspective in these videos, because as you can see from the player's view, there is no door icon in the top right corner of this room. It's like it doesn't even exist. But if I were to come in here and I change this from secret to normal again, now the door is visible and my players can continue exploring. So the next thing I wanna talk about are one-way walls. These are barriers that block vision from one direction, but not the other. So let's jump back to the dynamic lighting layer. 
and you'll notice I've left this gap right here in the wall. There's a portrait in this library, and there's a secret little passageway behind the portrait, so somebody can go in there and Scooby-Doo style look through the eyes of the portrait and spy on whatever's going on in this study over here. All right, so to set that up, what we're going to do is go back to the drawing tool, and I'm going to change my line color to be red. I want this kind of like what I did with the secret doors, and I'm going to change this from wall to one way. Okay, now I'm just going to draw my wall in as normal, so click and click, and then right click to complete it. And you'll notice when I did this, it drew these little arrows that are pointing to the left. That means right now we can see from this room into the little secret hallway, which is backwards from what I want to do. So I'm going to click on the select tool here, highlight the wall, and then flip the direction. And that moves the arrows from one side to the other. And now let's jump back to the token layer and let's pull our warlock into the hallway here. And as we do, we can look through his eyes and we can see into the study. But if I pull him through into the study, and look through his eyes, that wall appears solid. So he can't see through from this direction. He can only see through into the study if he's actually in the hallway itself. So the next thing I want to talk about is setting up windows in Roll20. If we jump back to the dynamic lighting layer here, you can see that I have breaks in the walls where the window takes place. And if we bring back our player's view, our player can drag their token right through that space and bring Jolo out into the garden beyond through the window. And really, I don't want that. What I want to do is have a barrier there that will block movement but allow sight. And honestly, there's two ways that we can approach that. The first way is we can create another wall. We could draw a line here, and instead of it being a wall, we could make it a transparent barrier. And that works just as you'd expect. You'd draw a line on the battlefield, and people would be able to see through it from both sides. But windows can be opened or broken and allow characters to pass through. So instead of creating transparent barriers, what I'm going to do is go back to the lighting button here, and I'm going to select Place Window. Now, windows can have their own colored lines. I'm going to go with this bright blue here. And then we'll say OK. And just like with doors, we can drop the window into place. And then we can use the select tool to adjust the lines to make it the right width and whatnot. And now when our players go and look through this, again, their line of sight is not blocked, but they can't drag through. They can't pass through that window unless they actually click on it to open it. And you'll notice when they click on it, the little glyph changes from four panes to three. And when it's three panes like this, it means the window is open and the character can pass through. You as the DM have the ability to make the window locked or opened just like you do with doors. So you could make this window locked and then your players have to make a roll to pick the lock or break the window quietly, however it is you'd like to play it. So now let's talk about placing light sources on the map. Up to this point, we've been using daylight mode, which means that all of our rooms are fully illuminated. And while that's great for an outdoor battle map or maybe for a mansion like this one during the daylight, we're probably not going to want that for every single map. So I'm going to turn that off right now. And when I click Save Settings now, you'll notice it got a little dimmer for me. And if I look at my player's view again, we can see that it's gone pitch black. That's because there are no light sources in this room. So let's go ahead and let's place one. So what I'm going to do is go back to the lighting section of the toolbar here, and I'm going to select Place Light. Now that changes my cursor into this little torch icon, and I can click to drop a torch. And now if I look through my player's eyes, we can see that the room is partially illuminated. We have bright light emanating out and then the light gets dimmer. And this is right in line with a torch which sheds bright light in a 20 foot radius and then dim light in another 20 foot radius. And if we want, we can actually click on this and we can modify the amount of light that's being given off. We could make it a shorter radius. So let's say it's 10 feet of bright light. And if I save settings here, you'll see it gets a little dimmer for my player. If I make it so that the light is further out, like say 40 feet of bright light, you can see 
that the room gets brighter. So you can control how much light is being given off from a particular source. You can also do things like change the color of the light. So right now the light is just regular light, but if I wanted to make this more sinister and give it this kind of uh, red tinge to it, I could do that, save settings, and now you see the room gets this sort of eerie red glow going on. Or if I wanted to make it really creepy, we could go with kind of a, a greenish color, some sort of poison emanating from the room, something like that. But the upshot is you have some control here to tinker with how the light appears and how far out it goes. And if you want a regular white light again, just click on this option right here, save your settings, and there we go. Now we're back to regular light. Now you may have noticed that I'm actually on the token layer right now when I placed that torch, which means that my player can see the torch icon over here in the room. And that was an accident, I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do now is click on the light, right click it and select layer, lighting layer. And what that does is moves the torch from the token layer to the dynamic lighting layer. But as you can see in my player's view, the light is still visible because light sources on either the token layer or the dynamic lighting layer will be visible to your players. If I were to take this light source and move it to the GM layer, you can see that the room goes black again because that torch is not in a place that the player can see. So I'm just gonna move that right back to the lighting layer. And there we go, now everything's lit up again. Okay, but what about when your player is carrying a light source, like maybe Jolo lights a torch or a lantern or something like that? Well, let's go back to the dynamic lighting layer, and I'm going to delete this light source, so Jolo is now pitch black again. What I'm going to do is go back to the tokens layer, I'm going to double click on Jolo, and in the dynamic lighting section, I'm going to say that Jolo emits bright light. So Jolo is carrying a torch, that torch goes out in a 20 foot radius. He also has dim light, which goes out in another 20 feet. And now when we click save, Jolo is lit up and you can see that the light effect moves with him as he travels around the room. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, okay, that's great, but what if the character has dark vision or some other means to see in the dark? So for example, Jolo is a warlock, Warlocks can have an invocation called Devil's Sight, which allows them to see in both regular darkness and magical darkness out to a distance of 120 feet. So let's go back to Jolo's dynamic lighting settings here, and we're gonna turn off the emitting bright light and low light, and instead what we're gonna do is say that Jolo has night vision, and we'll give him night vision out to 120 feet. Save settings, and now Jolo can see clearly out to that distance. In this case, the walls limit the full amount that he can see, but the upshot is he can see normally even though there are no light sources in this room. So if your characters have some other means to see in the dark, that's how you can set that up for them. So there you have it. That's how you can set up dynamic lighting in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.